National mining company that owns De Beers, the world's leading diamond company, to ask them to end the trade in Israeli blood diamonds. Israel is one of the world's leading producers of cut and polished diamonds. It imports rough diamonds from companies like De Beers, more than doubles their value by cutting and polishing, and exports them globally via hubs in London, Antwerp, Hong Kong, New York, and Mumbai. In 2017, Israel's net export of diamonds was worth $8 billion, making diamonds Israel's number one industry by far. Diamonds account for nearly a quarter of Israel's total manufacturing export. Israeli economist Shea Heva testified at the Russell Tribunal in November 2010 that overall the Israeli diamond industry contributes about 1 billion annually to the Israeli military and security industry. Every time somebody buys a diamond that was exported from Israel, some of that money ends up in the Israeli military. One dollar, one billion dollars every year. That's 2.7 million dollars every single day contributing to Israeli war crimes against children in Palestine. In 2014, we saw 521 children slaughtered by Israel whilst they took shelter in UN schools and in their homes. At the time, the Israeli Diamond Force boasted of sending truckloads of military equipment to help this slaughter of children. And the slaughter of children continues till today with over 50 Palestinian children killed by the Israeli occupation forces just last year. In fact, on February the 25th, an independent UN report investigating the killing of 183 Palestinians and the maiming and injury of, four, of over 6,100 others with live ammunition in Gaza in 2018 found the Israeli military may have committed war crimes and crimes against humanity. The Kimberley process was supposed to prevent the trade in diamonds that fund human rights violations. But the Kimberley process is now a definition of a conflict diamond excludes cut and polished diamonds. Jewelers exploit this anomaly and deceitfully claim diamonds crafted in Israel are conflict free, despite the UN Human Rights Council having found Israel guilty of war crimes and possible crimes against humanity. The Kimberley process needs urgent revision 
as at the moment they simply use to whitewash Israeli blood diamonds and present them falsely as conflict-free and ethical. In October 2015, at the AGM of the World Diamond Council in Moscow, there was a draft proposal to empower the, to empower the Kimberley process by widening the definition of conflict diamonds to include countries who flout human rights laws, not just in mining areas, but also in diamond trading centers. The institutes of the World Diamond Council had already confirmed the change in definition before the president of the Israeli Diamond Exchange, Shmuel Schnitzer, personally intervened to put a stop to it, saying, it could be disastrous for Israel. The already agreed change in the definition of a conflict diamond was binned to shield Israel's blood diamond trade. Diamonds that fund war crimes are not conflict-free and are not ethical. Anglo-American CEO Mark Kitifani last year emphasized that no degree of financial performance is worth a life. We are here today to ask Mark Kitifani, CEO of Anglo-American, to put his words into action by defending De Beers, by ending De Beers' significant trading relations with the Israeli diamond industry, which generates huge revenue for a regime guilty of grievous human rights violations. Thank you. Um, Anglo American is one of the world's largest mining companies. And why is this relevant? You've seen the, um, the enormous amount of attention that's been um, uh, paid to issues around climate change, around the climate crisis. We've seen the important uh, actions that are being taken that are generating a lot of interest, a lot of necessary interest, because that speaks to the urgency of the moment that we're in. But it's also relevant because that action and that uh, energy and that mobilization is happening in the city of London. And why is that relevant? The city of London is the home of, uh, of colonization. This is the heart of empire. Colonization was based on the invisibilization of culture, on the separation of nature from humans, on the ex exploitation of, uh, of, of, of humans and nature, and on the political uh, oppression and the violence that ensued. We are in the heart of empire, and one of the most violent manifestations of that colonization, of that neo-colonization, is the mining industry. The mining industry has colonized new territories for over 500 years. And Anglo-American is a company that's 100 years old. It's a company that uh, has operations in many, many different parts of the world. One of the most destructive uh, mining companies around, one of the biggest mining companies around. And, um, Today, we're, we're uh, a few of us that work directly with communities that are affected by Anglo-American uh, operations are about to go into the AGM and challenge Anglo-American primarily on the way in which it's promoting itself as the, the future. It's promoting itself as the future because it, it claims and it argues that the metals and minerals that we need for the renewable energy transition is, are going to be mined by them cobalt and lithium and copper and all sorts of metals that they argue will be necessary for the renewable energy transition uh, are going to be mined by Anglo-American and they present themselves in this uh, as the future of mining, as the future of, of, of our renewable energy transition. So we say that the renewable energy transition is absolutely necessary but at the same time the renewable energy transition and this is very relevant for the type of actions that are taking place, uh, taking place in London at the moment can't be at the cost of the lives and the livelihoods and the territories and the environment of people in the global south. The climate emergency cannot be 
uh, cannot, cannot save us from climate catastrophe in London, in the UK, or sacrificing people in the global south. Our calls for divestment from fossil fuels can't come at the cost of mining companies presenting themselves as the solution bearers rather than the enablers and the causes of the climate crisis in the first place. We can't le be legitimizing that, which is why our, our actions are grounded in solidarity with the communities that we work with because those struggles, those communities, are the communities that day in and day out are the site battles, are, are, are struggling and resisting, and those are the real site battles for dignity and justice. Those are the front lines of climate violence, which is why every year we come here and we challenge Anglo-American because we know that it's those communities that are standing up to Anglo-American and, and on the ground that have the most that, that will have the, the the ability to determine our future. We think that. Every, all of our actions in the UK should speak to that. It should speak directly to the way in which we think we should be in solidarity with those communities that are being colonised by uh, by the City of London. Anti-Semitism, anti-Semitism, anti-Semitism here. This is anti-Semitism, anti-Israel, hatred, hatred of Israel here. <laughs> This is hatred of Israel, anti-Semitism. Oh,